Welcome to Skyline Terra Explorer Tutorials. Today I'm going to explain how to use Global Shadow, Selection Shadow, and Shadow Query from Terra Explorer's Shadow Tools. Global Shadow displays the shadow effect over the entire scene in a 3D window. This affects all 3D models, objects, and buildings. It simulates the actual lighting from the angle of sun as set by the user. You can use the time slider to see how the shadow changes in the scene according to the time of day and date. Selection Shadow highlights the shadow of selected objects so you can visualize how those shadows affect the terrain. This can be applied to any 3D object and updated when you select a new object. Shadow Query calculates the sun shadow ratio in a selected area or volume over a selected time span. This produces a point layer of the sun shadow analysis showing which areas received more or less sun during a time frame. This can be calculated for a path, area, selected object, or clipboard object. Now let's see how they work. To start with the global shadow tool, first we need to turn on the time slider. This is found in the home tab in the environment section. Now turn on the sun, which is right next to the time slider. Now we can slide the time slider and see how the light source of the sun changes based on the time of day. This light source and its effects on the scene are determined by the project's current time, date, and time zone. Now we'll turn on the global shadow tool, which is right next to the sun in the environment section. This adds shadow to all 3D objects in the scene based on that sun light source. To change the settings of the global shadow tool, click on the calendar icon next to the time slider to open the date and time settings. Here you can change the time zone to any time zone you like. You can change the range of the date and time slider, and you can change the startup time of your project. Let's add a one year range so that we can change not only the time of day, but the day of the year. Now we have two sliders. The bottom slider changes the date of the year. So as we keep the top slider on the same time of day, we can see how a different day of the year will have different shadow. And that's how the global shadow tool works. Now we want to check how a specific building influences the global shadow result. To do this, first we'll need to select the building by going to the Home tab and the Select tool. Then click on the building. Once you have selected a building, go to the Analysis tab in the Shadow section and click the drop-down menu of Selection Shadow. Next click Show Selection Shadow. The shadow for just this building appears in blue. This shadow will also be highlighted as you move the time slider. We can also change the color and intensity of the shadow by going to Terra Explorer Options. Do this by going to the upper left hand Terra Explorer icon, clicking Terra Explorer Options, and going to the Graphics tab. Then find Selection Shadow Color and pick whatever color you'd like. Let's choose yellow and 70% intensity. Click OK. Now this building shadow is highlighted in yellow and is a more deeper intensity. If you want to update the selection shadow to another building, first select that new building. Go to Home, Select, and click on another building. Next, go to Analysis, Selection Shadow, and Update Selection. Now this building shadow is highlighted. If you want to hide the selection shadow for any reason, go to Selection Shadow and Hide Selection Shadow. Now let's take a look at the Shadow Query tool, which generates a new layer of points that describes the sun shadow ratio over a selected time span. So to do this, we have an area of interest that we're interested in seeing which areas over this segment of road receive more shadow throughout the day. So first we've generated uh, this yellow polygon over our area of interest, and we're going to need to put that on the clipboard. So go to your Home tab, click Select and then select that polygon area and then copy it and so now it's on the clipboard. You can unselect that and then go to the analysis tab 
and click Shadow Query. This opens up the Shadow Query dialog. So there are several parameters to go through when you're making a Shadow Query. First, you can choose to create it as a streaming layer or an entire layer. We're going to do a streaming layer. Next, you can either query as global shadow or a selection shadow. We're going to do a global shadow to start. Now you can choose the spacing. This is the spacing of the points in the output point feature layer. So this is going to be the vertical and the horizontal spacing. So we're going to choose one meter. Our minimum altitude for those points is going to be 0 0.5 meters and our maximum altitude is going to be 3.5 meters. Next, you can choose your time zone, and our start time I'll set to 8 a.m., end time 4 p.m., and these will be take, measurements will be taken every 60 minutes. So that means between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., every 60 minutes, the sunshine ratio is going to be calculated, and then the output point feature layer is going to be an average of those calculations that happened every 60 minutes. So since we've already copied this yellow polygon to the clipboard, now we just need to click From Clipboard, and the Shadow Query tool will begin calculating the query points. It's going to need to go through thousands of query points, and when it's done, a new layer is going to appear in our project tree. So let's take a closer look at the Shadow Query layer. So as you can see, we've got this matrix of points, and as I hover over the points, it tells me the exact number that was calculated for that query point as an average of the measurements that were taken um, every 60 minutes between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. So the color scheme is that the green points received little to no shadow, the yellow points received some shadow, orange received a little more shadow, and red received a significant amount of shadow. So let's back up and see what happens if you change the query to a selection shadow query. So what this does is it considers not the entire global shadow of the scene, but it only considers the shadows that we've previously selected. So I've already gone ahead and used the selection shadow tool to select these buildings. And so only the shadow from these buildings between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. are going to be considered when I do this next shadow query because we're querying as selection shadow. So let's see what happens. Um, we still click from clipboard because our yellow polygon, our area of interest, is still on the clipboard. And this is going to produce an entirely new um, point feature layer within the project tree. So now I'll unselect the shadow query from the global shadow. So as you can see, this shadow query selection shadow layer looks a little bit different than our global shadow layer. Um, and this is because not the entire scene's shadow is considered, but only these buildings whose shadow I had already selected. And that's how Terra Explorer's global shadow, shadow query, and selection shadow tools work. If you still have further questions, please go to the Terra Explorer user manual found on the question mark in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Once there, you can search for any of Terra Explorer's tools, including all three shadow tools. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and we also encourage you to check out skylineglobe.com to learn more.